Hey guys, Chris here. I'm out backpacking tonight. I'm in the northern Sierra Nevada mountain range and I'm going to be setting up camp here shortly and making a delicious dinner. I'm going to be making burritos and I got a beer even, so <laughs> that's next. Hey guys, Chris here. So I am uh, in, like I said, the northern Sierra Nevada mountain range, and it's near the Nevada border, and it's, uh, it's really kind of out of the way part of the Sierras. Not like Yosemite and that main central. This is very northern, very remote, and uh, very nice wilderness feel to it. <laughs> Love it up here. So it is uh, mid-July. It's July 10th today, and it's been really hot. It's been 90, two down in the valley so i got a late start on purpose to avoid most of the heat and i'm hitting up to this ridge up here uh and it's pretty interesting country up here i did a day hike up here a while ago found some caves some ancient trees and some great views of the valley down below and i got a little lava type peak back here behind me you can see that so but uh, we got a couple more hours of sunlight. It's very nice and bright right now, but it's gonna change fairly quick. So I gotta get the tent up and get some dinner going. Okay, so this is the ridge I was talking about, and it's a little windy up here. I found a couple of trees that I could maybe camp under, but I may shoot for this little pass up here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little pass. Yeah, right here. And uh, there's a couple of big boulders up there. I could maybe camp out behind there and do my cooking. But behind me is this cliff, cliff face, and this is where these caves are. You probably can't see them, but there's a series of small caves along the bottom of this cliff here that I can access. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna go check that out. Hey guys, check out this ancient tree behind me here. I don't really know what it is. It looks kind of like a bristol cone pine. I don't believe it is at this elevation, but uh, it's really old. It could be a 500 year old tree, a thousand years, I don't know. The bristol cone pines are two, three, four, five thousand years old. They're like, the, they're the oldest living thing on earth. Bristol cone pines in uh, the White Mountains, uh, just south of here quite a ways, but south of here in California, but pretty cool. Okay, I think this is gonna work. I got some good shelter. I got two boulders on either side of me. I got the cliffs behind me here and uh, it's level enough. I got these weeds in the way, but I may be able to uh, get fit the tent right in there. So this is where we're gonna set up camp. Okay, so this time I got the REI Quarter Tome One. This is two pounds, seven ounces. That is a great little tent. And uh, I had it returned to me. I, the, the rain fly got ripped 
they exchanged it for a brand new tent. So I just got this. It's actually a brand new tent and uh, kind of missed it. Two pounds, seven ounces. Yes, I got my Atmos, Atmos 65. I really like it, it's great suspension on this thing. Did a review a few years ago, but that is the anti-gravity, just a great system. Breathes really well, super comfortable. Anyways, that works great for me. And today, in my sleeping bag compartment, I have the Teton Sports uh, 20 degree bag. And that is what we're going with tonight. There it is, that's <laughs> bright enough. <laughs> Won't get lost if I uh, do some sleepwalking with it. Cause they'll find me. But that's a 20 degree bag. It's a little bit lighter than my uh, Kelty Cosmic Down. I forget the weight on this, but anyways, it says it's, it's the trailhead 20 degrees. So figured we'll be just fine with that tonight and got the uh, Nemo Tensor to uh, sleep on and the Nemo Philo Pillow. That is a sweet little ride. So also have the uh, REI Co-op Flex Light air chair. That thing just it's my it's my uh, little happy chair there that I sit in. You know, I get, it's pretty dry, it's pretty rocky and, and up here, so this, this kind of thing makes a big difference. It looks for us pretty good. You just attach the pump sack to right here. You can just connect it right there. I just add, connected that. And all you do is you take this bag here and you blow into it. Feels like you gotta stick your whole mouth into it, but you just blow it from about six inches away. It expands pretty quickly, and then you just squeeze this. We're gonna do this about four times. Look at that, it just fills up really nicely. Just roll that bugger right up. <laughs> And, well, look at that, we're almost there. Wow. I think, I think that's it. That was three. I got some pretty big pumps out of that. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that is it. Pull that off. And fortunately, they have a nice valve on the end where it doesn't when you pull it off, it doesn't leak after you try to fill it, which is a problem for some uh, some sleep pads. You fill it up, you, as soon as you remove your mouth or the whatever your pump system is, it starts to leak, and you got to be really strategic. But the Nemo Fillo Pillow, I really like this thing. It goes well with the uh, Nemo Tensor, and this thing, even even the stuff sack is. 
incorporated into the pillow. See that? Just take that bad boy, stick it in there. We got, now we got a coordinated pillow to go with my orange sleeping bag and my orange Nemo Tensor. Okay, this is uh, this thing is pretty world class. Pull that out. Two breaths. Ta-da! And to make it even more comfortable, we'll make sure that the stuff sack is behind the pillowcase. And voila! Here's my uh, final sleep setup. Very comfortable though. The Nemo stuff is very good. It fills this tent perfectly. You can see, look at that, it's pretty much exactly edge to edge with the uh, sleep pad. And that is the, uh, the regular wide insulated. Very comfortable, very warm. So, gonna sleep well tonight. Okay, I found a great spot behind this rock here. It's not really breezy, but I just like having kind of a shelter, so it feels good. And I did bring the bear canister. I got most of my gear in here, and I got my food right here. And this is what I brought. I'm just gonna show you guys. I have, let's start with this. I got some ground beef and some salsa right there so that's gonna we're gonna brown that and then I have some black beans right there lettuce and tomato and some tortillas and we're gonna make some burritos and I got a nice big 16 ounce beer that's gonna be coming up and I got that on ice so <laughs> gonna be living right all right got the uh, summit skillet comes in a nice cloth bag there and it's the jet boil summit skillet and pop that bugger out it comes with a little spatula this is gonna actually be very helpful tonight to work with and my trusty cutting board at the from the dollar store still that's gonna come in very handy so I'm gonna get everything set up and fire it up MSR pocket rocket 2 that works like a charm Love this little thing. Very powerful, 45 bucks. Obviously lightweight and small and pretty cool looking little gadget, isn't it? Nice big uh, burner on it and nice uh, holders, pot holders, I guess. And I got the uh, MSR canister as well, so. Okay, so I am, um, I have the uh, universal canister stand and that is 15 bucks and that is worth it because it fits on any canister and it gives you all this extra support. Look at that. <laughs> it's great. And that's going to save you a lot of heartache because once you kick your dinner over, your hot water or you burn yourself from the hot water, you are not going to uh Regret having that for 15 bucks. So that's been a good little investment. I have organic extra virgin oil and we're gonna do just a little shot of that on there. So when I cook, I like to make sure that everything is laid out. So when I'm ready to cook, I uh, am not running around with the grill going and I mean the, uh, the frying pan going, the stove going, and things cooking and then I can't find a spatula or a spork or uh, whatever I need. So I get everything all laid out so I'm ready to roll and start cooking. Look how, how, look how tall that flame gets. I'm gonna simmer that thing down, but that's, uh, it is a powerful, powerful stove. Ziplocs work really great for these uh, kind of short-term food items.
Unfortunately, ground beef seems to uh, brown really quickly. And so we're just gonna finish this off here. I'm about ready to add the beans. These are organic black beans. And that will be very nice with my burrito. That nice and mixed up. We're getting a nice sunset tonight. It's quite amazing the sunset. And I'm busy cooking, so that's all right. I actually hopped up and uh, took a few pictures of it. Pretty nice. But you gotta focus on one thing at a time. Get too busy doing uh, multitasking. I'm gonna lose one of my tasks, which one of them would be my dinner. So I'm not about to lose that one. Okay. Yeah, we're getting some crazy light tonight while I'm cooking here, so everything's kind of reddish, but that's the uh, the sun setting. So, we're going to do some veggies now. Got my trusty Gerber knife here. That is a really a sharp little knife, very lightweight, kind of a little tactical knife. I really like this knife, though. There we go. Look at that, locks out, super sharp, and uh, that works just fantastic. And it's got a little clip on it. I could put it on my belt if I decided to do that, but eh, I just keep it with my cook gear. And I do have a bag of salsa as well. It's like a chunky salsa. And uh, that's gonna give me some nice flavoring on it. I'm just going with the uh, Mission flour tortillas. They're a the little bit, they're smaller ones, and they're the super soft, so I won't even need to, uh, you know, warm them up or anything, fold them, so. So that'll work perfect. I also have a beer on ice, and it's in a can, and that was strategic because when I'm done drinking it, there we go, <laughs> I can crush the can down to about that tall and uh, the ice that's in the bag, I could actually drink that if I felt like it. And so I, anyways, my weight will be reduced, but I got a Flyjack Firestone 96 uh, Pale Ale, Hazy India Pale Ale. <laughs> I thought, why not? Beer and burritos. That's the way to go. I also have some all natural, it's Gouda cheese. And I like that it came in this little kind of a mini uh, cheese wheel here. And I thought that'll be perfect. Just a, just a little consolidated cheese there. So we'll just take some of that and I can just take the knife and shave a little bit of that into there. And we got a fly coming for dinner. <laughs> Go away. There, so now we got Gouda cheese. All natural Gouda cheese. So there we are. And I have not added the salsa yet, but I'm about ready to roll that up. And I think we're gonna have a couple of these tonight. So I guess the best way to do the salsa would be just to pour it. Just a little bit right on there. There we go. Now we are ready to eat. Let's take a look at that. There we go. <laughs> Pretty tasty. I haven't even tasted it yet. It just looks tasty. So, all right, time to eat. That is really good. Good view too. <laughs> that 
was crazy. I heard multiple echoes in that one. See if we can get an echo out of this thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> That's probably more beer than I wanted, but it beats buying a six pack just to get one beer out of it. So, so I went with the one can for $2.59 of the uh, Firestone Fly Jack. <laughs> but yeah, what a great night. So tomorrow we are gonna go up into these caves, check them out, see how, see how deep they go or not. So this is lava country and this is all lava rock as far as I know. So it's very interesting but it's very harsh. I was very fortunate to get the camp spot I got because it was level enough and sandy enough. Otherwise there's just rock everywhere. It's just very rocky and very shallow dirt. So um, yeah I'm really happy to be up here. There's going to be no rain tonight but there could be some stars. So. All right, I'm gonna do one more burrito before I clean it up. I got some cleanup to do here, but uh, it'll go fast. And we're gonna get ready for bed. So, <laughs> not good. Okay, so I just finished loading this. I'm gonna lock it down. And that's how you lock it. And I always keep a penny right there under the duct tape because that's how you open it and the bears cannot open those two uh, those two sc screws right there. So anyways, we're gonna walk this guy off into the uh, woods there about 100 yards or so and put that away for the night. And I got everything in here, I got everything cleaned up. I used a dish detergent and a little bit of water for the uh, little, my little skillet and the little flipper and the spork, etc. And I cleaned everything up, rinsed it off and quite a ways away from the tent, and then we're gonna walk this way. Like I said, about 100 yards is pretty good, and you just set that on a, a flat surface, so if the bear goes after it, it doesn't roll down a big hill or something, but anyways, he's never gonna get inside there, so we're good. Okay, I'm going to uh, switch out my clothes. It's just best not to uh, sleep in the clothes that you cook in, and then I'm going to be walking those out into a dry bag and finding a secure spot for that as well. And I am heading to bed. It's been a, it's been a long day. It's been a good day for my channel, <laughs> Base Camp Chris. And uh, what a fun day. Looking forward to tomorrow. And we got some stars coming out. Um, but I'm just too tired. I'm going to be, I'm going to turn in. But I'm going to check out the caves, get some coffee in the morning. Maybe do some photography. And, uh check check out the uh, the lava formations around here so all right we'll see you in the morning all right good morning guys i slept really good been up uh, packing some things up and i am getting ready to do some coffee up in that cave that i talked about see if i can find it and uh, anyway, still got the tent set up, but everything else has been packed down, ready to put away. So, but I am looking forward to my coffee. Been kind of busy this morning, and I love all these rock formations all around me. I didn't realize how many rock formations there were. I guess I did realize it, but it's just during the day, it's just so much clearer what's going on so all right let's get to it
So you can see the uh, the cliffs here, and then these the bottom. It's like eroded out, and some of these are bigger than others. This one's pretty good size, so it actually would make a good shelter. But there's another one around the corner here that you can go inside, and it's like a real cave. This is just more of an over or outcrop. But yeah, if it was raining or hailing, I'd go in there, make my dinner for sure. So check this one out. Okay, that's another like overhang like that. Pretty good size though. So. Cool. Okay, check this one out. I think I found a good one here. You can see. Let's see if you can see this. Look at that. It goes way back in there. <laughs> wow. All right, check this out, guys. Look at that. It goes up. You can see where the water and snow eroded. But it's a, so it's a cave, almost like a canyon cave. But there's definitely some caves here. Look at that. Wow. I think, I don't know how far back this goes. Probably right here. Yeah, you can see that. Look at that. I think I'll, I think I'll sit right up in here, in the light. And oh, look at that one. That goes pretty far back there too. So, and I will make my coffee right over here. Morning, along with my coffee, I have the uh, Mountain House breakfast skillet, shredded potatoes, scrambled eggs mixed with pork sausage, peppers, onions, freeze dried. <laughs> yeah, yes. But that is a quick, easy way to make a meal, and I am. Um, that's about all I'm up for. So that and my coffee, I'm ready to go. So. Always remove the oxygen absorber. Oh, that's what it looks like. And that is my other super convenient coffee. It's as easy as you can make it. I do like my uh, GSI coffee pour over. Okay, here we go. That is with my Sea to Summit collapsible mug and X bowl. Works really well. So that looks pretty good. I can see the hash browns in there. A little bit of bacon pieces and my coffee. So. <laughs> All right, check this out. Don't try to make friends with raccoons. They will just charge at you, steal your food, and then laugh about it with their friends behind your back. That does not look like a raccoon to me. <laughs> That's a little bigger than a raccoon. Okay, you may have noticed my little osprey uh, 
day pack here. It's very small, very lightweight, and I bring this when I'm backpacking as a alternative to do short little excursions like this cave trip I'm doing. And this works really cool because this thing stuffs inside this little pocket right here. And that fits so easy in my main backpack. I just really like having that uh, as a resource to work with so I don't have to carry things in my hands and stuff. So yeah, works really well. And the other thing that I've been using is the Thermarest Z seat. There is no way to sit on all these rocks here uh, without something like this. So this really makes a difference. I cook on, I sit on this while I'm cooking, starting a campfire, put it outside my tent for a um, little welcome mat so I can hop in my tent and not have to stand in the ground in my socks. But Thermarest Z seat. Hey guys, check out this cave right here. Look at that. It's not very big, but it is like this full cave and somebody, look at that. Somebody was in here. You can see some, looks like firewood stacked up and some kind of a, looks like a grill. They were grilling something in here. Made some kind of a makeshift bench right there. This is nice and flat in here too. I could actually set the tent up in here. Not sure I want to be in a cave and have a bear walk in who says, Eric just got home from my vacation. So happy to be back at the house. Comes wandering in and I'm in here. <laughs> we might have to have a, you'd have a stern discussion with me. All right, check this one out. It's uh, I just found an arch cave is what it looks like. Look at that. This goes right through and then it goes under here and goes way inside of a totally legit cave again. Not very high ceiling, but uh, yeah, wow, <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, I love exploring. And here's another little window out that way. I got a hawk. I believe it's a hawk. He's not happy that I'm walking along the cliffs here. Must have a nest up up ahead somewhere. He's trying to distract me. At least that, that's what he's thinking he's doing. I'll, I'll distract him. Yeah, he's not happy. So with lava formations, you get a lot of really strange columns and towers and uh, really interesting formations because it's lava. So it's, it's creating it as it's flowing and then drying and then breaking apart. And then, but this one over here is really unique. This is a totally a balanced rock. You can see underneath here, is a completely different rock right there and this thing is totally balancing on that it obviously eroded and this was probably a stronger rock here and then eroded around it or actually a softer rock a softer rock eroded and then left the big rock on top of it <laughs> really cool All right, you guys, uh, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed uh, 
Nice dinner out here. I'm glad you guys are watching. Thank you. I appreciate it. If you like what I do, like and subscribe. And uh, as always, keep hiking.